Well, hello and welcome uh, to uh, a time here with, with Coach Pete. My name is David Struzeski, CEO of Sound Planning Group. Uh, excited to be here with uh, Pete Finland. Pete, just share a little bit about yourself. Uh, as he said, I'm Pete Finland, and I am the uh, latest addition to the staff of SPG mm -hmm. as the uh, Certified Retirement and Transition Coach. Yes, sir. So I'm working with the uh, non-financial bedside manner that we've talked about and will continue to talk about in this upcoming video. Mm-hmm. Very good. Um, David, you and I have talked about a lot of things. We probably talked, felt like two days, but it was two hours before this, <laughs> before this video. And I'm just super excited to ask you some questions about how people choose financial advisors. Mm -hmm. And, and in my role as a certified retirement transition coach, I work with a lot of my clients that go, Hey, Pete, I need a, I need somebody. I, and I'm like, wow, haven't you ever had anybody before? And then I started realizing that, you know, historically, people worked till they were 65. You know, they retired. The kids were grown and gone. The house was paid for. And they had a pension. Right. And with that, maybe they got a little inheritance. But, you know, it kind of was the the topic of having somebody to help you plan financially was for the rich only. And people get nervous when they think they don't know everything. So with, with that, I, I want to jump right in and, and, and just first question, right, right out of the block. Sure. You know, how and why should a person choose a financial advisor? Uh, okay, great question. Kind of a significant topic. Um, a financial advisor should be like a coach, like you're, you're a retirement transition coach. Um, you know, your financial advisor is not just someone that gives you a pie chart. I mean, that is a function, but you're looking for really a relationship specifically as you go into retirement, that's going to be more of the spoke in your wheel or the, the, the hub of your wheel and not just a spoke of it. You know, so the investment side, the pie chart is, is really important, but what we really need to be doing is looking at an entire plan because an entire planning process is what's really gonna empower you to make the right decisions that you're really looking for. So how does someone choose a, a financial professional? Um, what we've found is that education is, is really the key to, to understanding what you need to know, what you don't know, and reaffirming the things that you might've already had some ideas about. Uh, we additionally have created a, uh, a 10 question document, you know, and there's a lot of these 10 question documents out there to be very candid, you know, and, and, and most of them are just kind of like softball pitches to, to someone saying, Hey, can you hit home run off this one, bud? Um, what, what I've done is I've, I've put together 10 questions, uh, that, uh, that we can give to anybody. And these questions are really going to get to the heart of who is it exactly that's working for me and working with me. Cause that's really how the financial relationship should be. It's that the advisor's actually working for you and not you working for them or with them in some regard. But see, there's a big difference between advisors who are selling something and advisors who are providing advice, right? It's, it, it's, it's how we start the conversation that that's really going to uh, determine where the outcome is going to go. If I have it predetermined in my mind that I'm going to sell you something and that's how this is going to turn out and this is what it's going to look like, then I'm going to have a lot less ideas and, and thought going into the actual planning process. And so in, in our firm, uh, we, we think that it's really important to have a real process that we can really count on. And so I've developed a proprietary seven step process. Uh, that, that starts with, you know, what are we going to be doing for, for an income plan? You know, when we look at an income plan, that's the conversation about how do we maximize Social Security? Is that important? It's literally the single most important decision that retirees will make is how do they choose to take their Social Security? Hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, potentially could, could be theirs extra uh, as a result of, of making that decision. And by the way, also tax preference money. That's, that's, a, that's a really important point. But they need to figure out their spending plan. You know, someone sitting down with you and determining what does the spending plan really look like? You know, you could say that that's a budget, but budget is kind of a bad word. So we'll call it a spending plan. Uh, next thing is, how are we uh, uh, doing our portfolios right now? How are we investing uh, given today's record high stock markets, which also has a lot of volatility with it, record low interest rates, which means that, you know, bonds, uh, as an example, uh, which are the quote unquote safe part of our portfolio, uh, they've got they've got a lot of problems, mm -hmm. especially in the roads ahead. And, and so I've, I've actually developed a course called the Principles of Retirement Planning that goes into addressing 
uh, some of the critical issues about how are we investing and for the you know and why are we investing and uh, I'm I'm really trying to d develop some ideas that are perhaps a little bit outside of the box uh, just in comparison to traditional uh, uh, planning models. You know, we also want to look at tax planning. We also want to look at healthcare and long-term care. We want to take a look at real estate, which is a very significant asset to many people retiring, whether it's their primary residence or maybe they've got an additional home or homes uh, that uh, that they've been uh, you know managing as well. What are they going to do with it, and uh, and how do we uh, how do we address these things in a tax advantaged way? Uh, so there's a lot of particulars that go into this. What are we doing for estate planning? What happens if someone uh, predeceases the other one? You know, we go from married filing jointly to single filer. Uh, and then ultimately, what are the, how are we taking care of someone on an annualized basis? So I see a financial advisor as someone that's coming alongside of you and is helping you to coordinate uh, the, the, the different, you know, specific conversations that we have to have in that seven step process, because each one of them is a conversation. Yeah. I, I see more what, what draws to my mind is having had kids and my situation and you got to date before you get married. Yeah. And sure. so the more chances you have to expose yourself to that firm, that individual, those programs, the better off you are. Right. And we'll get into that a little bit about the different programs that you have that yeah. are free of charge for yes. people to go to. Sure. Um, you know, the other thing that you mentioned life planning and a spending plan. It's like a lifestyle plan also mm -hmm. in that, you know, I'm at my age looking towards more wealth preservation, maybe yeah. than wealth accumulation. Right. And with that comes distribution, but it comes a lot of different things. Take me through some of those concepts and and how that applies to how you deal with your folks. Yeah. Well, so our firm specifically specializes in the distribution phase or the spending phase. So we've accumulated uh, money over a lifetime. And at some point in time, we're going to transition from from working in a career to maybe work optional or less work or completely, I'm not going back. And so what we need to understand is then how are we creating an income plan? How are we creating an income stream that's going to be able to fund us for the next, in most cases, probably 30 years uh, into retirement? Many people don't understand that we're living mm -hmm. much longer than we were before. And so, uh, you know, of course, historically, the, uh, the, the number one concern of retirees uh, right now in America is uh, running out of money before we run out of life and time. And so how do we coordinate our things in such a way that it's going to distribute and it's actually really going to be there for us? So in the distribution phase, we need a little bit more protection. Why? Because when when the down markets occur, we're spending during that time frame. Yeah. You know, talk to someone who, who retired uh, in, in the year 2008 or just around that. And, and, and how have, have things really progressed? How has that really worked out for them when they've had to spend money because they have a lifestyle? And by the way, they're in the beginning of their retirement uh, at that point in time. So, so those go-go years, 65 to 75, we'll just call them theoretically, um, are, are going to have a lot more extra expenses in there. You're kind of setting yourself up for retirement. You're going to take some cruises and vacations and trips. And there's some transition, thing, buy a new bike, whatever it is. And, uh, and so there's some spending that's going to occur there that you really don't want to compromise on. And so the point that, uh, that I want to make is, is that right now we've got some big challenges. As I mentioned just before, bonds are yielding about a third of what they've done historically. So it takes three times the amount of money to get the same return, perhaps as your parents were able to get in their retirement. So what, what's, what's broken right now is a lot of the regular planning models that, uh, that, that people have been using and pursuing. They're probably going to leave people uh, short unless they've just got a tremendous amount of money that, that they can right. invest and it's ultimately gonna yield enough to, to live on. So we wanna get really specific with it, but we need to identify, you know, we got the go-go years, I mentioned 65 to 75, uh, the slow-go years, uh, you know, 76 to, uh, to, to 85, and then uh, 85 plus, we'll just call them the no-go years. And so we've, we've gotta understand what our needs are at one uh, season, uh, versus the next. Maybe we've got mortgages. Maybe we don't have mortgages. Maybe we're buying cars all the time in the go-go years and we buy our last car in the slow-go years. How are we uh, planning out with the best of our understanding? I mean, there's no such thing as a perfect plan uh, from, the, from the start. But what you can do is if you can actually get something into a true planning model, you can understand when, when taxes adjust, 
when 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 uh, when opportunities arise, when a new car is needed, when a big vacation or opportunity shows up, or you really want to give to something. Maybe you got a grandson or granddaughter that's getting married, and you go, "Hey, I'd love to give them fifty thousand dollars to start their life out. You yeah. know, help them buy a house." How do we do those things? It's it's having a team that's really going to be able to be alongside of you to uh, to, to walk through those processes and, and answer some of those questions. It, it's it sounds like the two words that popped to my mind: customization, yes, and individuality. Hmm. And if you have those things with your relationship. That's that's going to make it easier. Right. And the point you also made is the sooner, the better. Right. I mean, I prefer my clients not come to me when they're retired. Yeah. I like the one year, three or five years leading up to it. Yeah. So much more fun. Mm -hmm. So much more fun to play what if. Yeah. Um, play make believe. Play what if. But, Perfect. But, but, but go ahead. Yeah. And, and I think this leads me into what a really big question that I get asked a lot. And I don't make any one referral, but it's like big house versus little house. Yeah. Um, big financial firm versus local mm -hmm. or regional. Yeah. Or you know, what give me some highlights that people should be looking at when kind of making those decisions. So that's a really great question. Um, you know, a lot of us have comfort or confidence in the idea that a big firm, as an example, was managing your your 401k. You know, and 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 so you know the name. Our, our team plays in their stadium once a year, maybe, yeah. and so we think, oh, this has to be the safest place to get investment advice, the best place to get investment advice. So this is why I actually created this ten questions document because it gets to the heart and understanding who are they and how are they exactly structured. See, our firm is is a smaller firm. We, we consider ourselves more boutique in that we're we're big enough to do the job, but small enough to care. Mm -hmm. And so we think that that type of a statement and relationship is, is really important uh, to the average American. You're an individual. You're not just a number that, you know, or, or you don't want just an 800 number for someone that you call and you say, hey, I answered four questions or 10 questions. You know, do you know the rest of my life? You got it figured out with some cheap calculator. There's a lot of particular things that go into uh, making a good decision. So, hey, there's some good firms out there that, that are big. And then there's some great firms out there that are small. Uh, I believe that being independent, though, is, is a really important component to that. Because, see, if someone's owned by a big bank or they're owned by an insurance company, you know, where does the information come from? You know, the second part to that question is that there's two different licenses in the financial services world. We've got a broker dealer licensed, uh, which is, which is uh, primarily someone that's selling uh, mutual funds or selling uh, whatever product that, that it is, variable annuities that, that they might be, uh, you know, told that they should be selling. And then on the other side, you've got a fiduciary advisor. And we've kind of heard this term fiduciary thrown around. Yeah. There can be fiduciaries in the broker dealer world, by the way. But, but the word fiduciary is so important because what that means is that this advisor has an obligation to do what's in your best interest. And so I think that, that working with a fiduciary is, is incredibly important because you want to make sure that someone is starting with, with, with the right idea. You know, uh, Covey in Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, uh, he said, you know, start with the end in mind. And so if you, if you know where you want to go, then it's easy to kind of backfill. How yeah. do we actually get there? And so if I know where I want to go and I've got someone who's, who's independently able to you know, navigate all 84,000 investment options, that's able to give me custom uh, portfolios as opposed to big cookie cutter type of models that the big box organizations use. A lot of the big box firms are more cookie cutter, just to, just to be candid, because they're working with so many people and their answer is, you know, a 60-40 portfolio is a moderate and this is what you do and this is what we've selected and, you know, that's going to be your engine for your retirement and everything's going to work out just fine. Use the 4% rule. Uh, our approach is that, you know, while that information may be okay as a rule of thumb or something to look at, uh, how about we can compare and contrast whether that idea was good? Could we improve upon it to better and ultimately create something that, that would be best for that individual, that particular scenario, that family? And so I believe that there's advantages that the smaller firms have because, you know, think about, think about a big carrier uh, out on the ocean. And if it needs to turn around, it takes a mile uh, for, for that carrier ship to actually make a yeah. turn. Well, we want to be more like speedboats. Why? Because we can be. And so when we invest as, as fiduciary advisors for our families, 
you know, we have the, the ability to invest them in institutional ways, but they get treated as a, as a small individual. There's some really cool things that we talk about in our principles retirement planning course. Uh, and, um, and, and we ultimately have uh, I d uh, developed a, a strategically aligned asset manager relationship. Basically, actually, we need two fiduciaries. We need a fiduciary money manager. We need a fiduciary advisor that's actually sitting down with us and doing the planning. They really are heads and tails. Uh, we do really need both components that are specialized. And so I really love the idea of bringing specialists in and kind of being more like a primary care physician that wants to help you to, to make sure that you're seeing the right people for the right reasons at the right time and help you to analyze the information that you've been given and interpret it in conjunction with everything else. Because when we say yes to one thing, it's also saying no to something else. There's a ripple yeah. effect, right? And so, um, you know, being big enough to do the job, small enough to care just speaks about being dynamic and, and a model and, and, and customizing uh, the planning experience. And so that also, just like you mentioned, is not just for the wealthy, that's not just for, for, for people that have 10 million or more, that's for everybody. And uh, we believe that everyone deserves a real planning process. And so that 10 questions document that I just mentioned really helps to, to get to the heart of who is it that's working uh, uh, or that you're having a conversation. What is your expectations uh, about this relationship so that it's at least clear and on the table? And if you feel like you know, that organization is the right way to go and the right thing to do, then don't have an expectation beyond what they do. But one other thing that I'll, I'll just note here is that it's a little secret in financial services. Now, I mentor hundreds of advisors across the country, and that is most firms just have a few models or a few ways of doing investing. It's, it's a buy and hold model typically. And so I like to say buy and hold, park and pray, hope everything will be yeah, okay. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and that works out great when the market's crashing up. But when we get into the sideways markets and things get a little funny, you might want a little bit more attention uh, than than just, hey, this is what we do. The market gives and takes away. You'll be fine over time. You know, I like to show people math and science. I like to show them uh, the preponderance of evidence uh, that's going to give them the best opportunities to succeed. Doesn't mean we win every time, but we can give people the opportunity to uh, to mathematically win more than they lose. And um, that ultimately can, can, can work out really well. I think... As I hear you talk and things pop into my brain on my my side of the uh, the fence, the non financial side, yeah, the the hub versus the spoke in planning, and then the part about everybody hits retirement, they get the gold watch, they don't go work next day, <laughs> but that's just the start of real change for people, right? And so having that, maybe it's not speedboat, but maybe it's you know a river cruise versus a a 5000 person you know cruise ship right it, it's the ability to find your your spot on that ship right and what's important to you and and the more that i think about we're probably all going to be retired longer than we worked right I, 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 now for me it's, i love working it's very true i don't need a job but i love working and yeah. a lot of your folks will come to you with the ability to say i still want to work yeah but they're so-called retired and that's fine too. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like you have the tools to address those types of people also. Absolutely. It, we call it a work optional lifestyle. Bingo. You know, we got a lot of, uh, uh, let's just say doctors uh, as an example that that want to give back or want to teach or, or, or just kind of oversee certain parts of their hospital or, or practice. You know, they'll, they'll work for a long time as an, as an example. Uh, really important to understand um, the tax implications, it's very important to understand how that works with Social Security benefits, Medicare benefits, Roth conversion strategies, and, and the real tax planning that we want to get into. Um, because, you know, the tail that wags the dog in the future, just by the way, number one uh, expense for most retirees today is going to be taxes. And that's in today's tax dollars. You know, it's, it's very easy for us to just understand that even the new uh, president here is talking about, you know, raising taxes uh, in a very significant way. So does that matter? What's the outcome going to be? Is everything just going to be fine, akuna matata? Or are there some things that we can figure out and look at here that, yeah. uh, that we can help to address that can, that can make a, a difference for our future? And so uh, I love this team approach that we've been able to develop. And so my father, uh, just to just note this real quick, my father, uh, he worked with the big box firms for many years and uh, since 1978. And, uh, and ultimately, you know, he, he was trying to create 
uh, the, the type of environment that he would want to come to or his parents would try to, would, would find and, and ultimately really appreciate as a financial services firm. And so when I came alongside of an 07, um, you know, I began to ask questions about, hey, how are we doing this versus that? I was evaluating what the big box groups were doing because, you know, the people I was talking to were primarily with some of the right. bigger firms. And what I was able to do is I became CEO in 2010. Uh, I was able to, to really customize our approach and our practice in such a way to try to provide competitive advantages where we can find them. And, and that becomes a very significant uh, uh, part of the planning process is, you know, where are the competitive advantages? What is it that I need to understand that I don't personally have the specialization for? And, you know, a lot of people today are probably thinking, gosh, this is way over my head. I don't know how to do this, et cetera. Or I haven't asked my, 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 my guy or gal or team or whatever, you know, about tax planning or about coordination. <clears throat> I think that it's your primary care physician's job to make sure that your cholesterol is good, make sure your blood pressure is right, yeah. make sure that your medications are being managed well, make sure that you're, you know, have some understanding on what's going well, what's not going well, and, and some differences that you can make. So we as fiduciaries take that approach and really trying to, to sit down with someone and say, hey, our job isn't to dictate. We're just going to sit alongside of you here and co-create. Tell us what your goals and visions are. Tell us what you want to accomplish, what's important to you. And so that's where our, our, our relationship really blends well, because you're helping people to coach and in sort of the transition, some things to expect and how our paradigm adjusts from working and, and how we view life to now we're not waking up to an alarm clock every day. Right. You know, we don't have the same people asking us questions or responsible for deadlines and things. So how are we going to make that transition? So that's why the complementing of of, of kind of the, the psychological, social and, and, and the various interactions and things that you want work in tandem with the financial services world because you're a lifestyle, period. And, and you're not just an account value. And so what what a team can really do is, is come alongside of you and help you to, to, to get what your, your goals are. Man, that's, that's where the, the rubber meets the road. That's where I think the, the real relationship is going to be found. So wherever you find that, that's where you should go. Yeah, I think I think so. Having the relationship, the ability to state your fears, to say mm, this is well overwhelming, said. to say I feel stupid about this, please help me. You know, teach a class called Choices where we teach middle schoolers to raise their hand, ask for help. Mm. Not the night before when you had two weeks to do your homework, right? And now it's the night before a retiree waiting till the last minute. Yeah, the further along you are to plan the more fun you'll have. So I I love the team approach. Mm -hmm. uh, it works. It, 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 it's kind of like, do you want the light at the end of the tunnel to be the train coming head on? Or do you really want it to be the light? Yeah. You and, don't know. And, and, but you don't know. Yeah. So why wouldn't you take all that information, mm -hmm. all those relationships that are available to you right. to make sure it isn't the train coming head on? Yes, sir. So I love that. Yeah. Let me ask you a couple other questions here. Yeah, go for it. Um, this one's always interesting to me that what things retirees should be thinking about mm -hmm. that most aren't. Right. And you touched on a few, but it, it's a great chance to kind of take three steps backwards and drive some points home. Yeah. Um, so a lot of things that people aren't thinking about, I think number one is that, you know, I, it's statistically proven baby boomers are, do not think about getting older. I mean, they, they know that they're aging, but they're not thinking about mm. being 85 or 95 years old. And so what I like to, to, to talk to people about is, you know, could, can you see yourself 20 years ago? And so say you're 65 years old and you're 45 in this example, you're probably raising kids, you're wherever point that you are in your business or career. What advice would you give yourself as a 65 year old today that you could, that you could have shared with that 45 year old? It'd be really wow. interesting to think about, right? Yes. Well, Let's just let's just then flip that 20 years forward. Okay. And so now let's think about the 85 year old you. And if the 80, 85 year old you who's who's reaching the no-go years, but it's probably got another 10 to 15 years ahead of them, at least based on mortality, there's right. a good probability of this, or that one of you will. And I know there's a lot of people that think about this right now and they're like, that's not gonna be me. I I'm telling you right now, you got a plan. Like yeah. there's there's a lot more tomorrows because medical science is improving all the time and, and they're, they really are advancing our lives here. So longevity is killing us. That also might be the title of a good book coming out here soon. <laughs> um, 
And, uh, and so we, we have to understand that longevity is actually the number one concern that we should have. You know, hey, I'm concerned about the stock market crashing. Hey, I get it. Um, the, 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 but what if you retire at 65 and you only live to 72? Doesn't matter what you did for investing, where you did it. Doesn't matter what you did for Social Security. Doesn't matter if you took care of your health care correctly because you didn't live long enough. If we live a long time, longevity is killing us. Yeah. And that's one of the big issues right now with America is that our federal uh, government today is spending more than 45% of all revenue on Medicare and Social Security. And half of the baby boomers today have retired. Just half. So our workforce force is depleting. We've got almost 50% of the federal budget that's already going to this. And we've got 10,000 people a day that are aging into the system. Yeah. This is a big deal. So longevity is a part of the challenge that, that's facing America. Also significant deficits right now. And so one of the things that I, I like to, to, to share with people is this idea that there's a difference between tornadoes and hurricanes. Now, a tornado shows up. There's no time to plan for it. You just get down to the basement, run, you hunker down and, fast, you, yep. and you know get in fetal and, and hopefully you make it through. Uh, a hurricane though, it's a little bit different. There's a tropical storm in the distance, it gets a name, and then, uh, and then ultimately we know the glide path and approximately where it's gonna hit and when it's gonna hit. And I would say that a lot of retirees today have not really addressed the elephant in the room, which is federal spending in a way that, that is unsustainable. We're essentially you know, spending double what, what's coming in. Uh, we've got deficits right now that are very significant. We've got a lot of COVID spending and probably a lot more to come. I hope that we don't have a bunch of cities or states that, uh, that file bankruptcy here in the future, especially if things get bad. Uh, but if we did, that, that means a whole lot more spending. Yeah. Uh, we've got uh, uh, right now, you know, that means that taxes are ultimately going up. Most people think they're, they're going to go into retirement and they're going to have a lower taxes. Um, well, I'm going to say that that's probably not true. And by the way, most of your money's in 401ks and that's tax deferred. And so Uncle Sam has a lien on all that money right. and he gets to choose what, he, what percent he gets to keep when he wants to. So, so, you know, how much of that's yours? Not sure yet. We got to look at it. So we want to be, be really planning, especially because of the passing of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act and some of the opportunities that that gives us. I, I share a lot about that in uh, our Social Security and Taxes course. But to, to finish the analogy of the, the hurricane and the, and the tornado, you know, we've got this, this stock market bubble. I think it's pretty easy for everyone to see that, especially if we look at, uh, you know, where the S&P 500 has gone since 1950. Um, we actually have a bond bubble. Uh, September of 1981 uh, was when interest rates began to go down. OK, so we're, we're celebrating 40 years this year. I don't know if we're celebrating. I think we are. Yeah. Um, that interest rates have been dropping. And what that means is that we've essentially been able to make money in bonds through something that's called net present value. I don't want to get into that right now, but, but ultimately bonds have gone up and they've been this bastion of safety that is going to have some challenges to it. In fact, there's four ways that we lose money in bonds. And I think that that's one of the biggest time bombs that, that's, that's actually in front of us right now. The real estate market is in a bubble as a result of lower interest rates. They just allow us to borrow more money at that point in time. And so there are a number of things that are, that, are, that are coming. I'm actually calling this the Federal Reserve bubble. That's the hurricane that I see in the future. And it is coming and it's going to be nationwide and actually worldwide uh, as far as the effects and the ripples and everything else that's, that's going on right now. And so we've got this pretty significant storm that could be facing us. Again, I hope that I'm totally wrong on that and that somehow everything works out and, and whatever else. But wouldn't we want to be prepared? Wouldn't the 85-year-old, uh, you know, that would be giving us advice at the 65-year-old person today say something along the lines of, hey, please be thinking about me. Yeah. Uh, please make sure that there's something here. Healthcare is important. Yes. You know, yeah, at 85, I'm going to be flicking channels and not necessarily buying new cars and going on big vacations. But there's life that still lives. There's expenses and things that you still want to do and things you want to, you want to go to lunch with your friends and, 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 and enjoy some of these things and have, and have money to be able to share and, and to give to charities and, you know, kids, grandkids, whatever it might be. There, there's a lot of things that, that are important. So I just want to say, start with the end in mind, know where you're going and know that this planning is not just about doing the first 10 years really well. It's about doing the entirety of your retirement really well. And so we can start a planning process in that way that can really give you some control and some confidence in the future and where you're headed. I, I love I love the, the analogies. And I guess for me, and having come from a family with 
grandparents at all in 90s. Okay. But you know, it's a it's a cr- cross between where I don't want my kids having to take care of me. Right. And I don't want to be the richest guy in the cemetery. <laughs> I mean, it just kind of kind of that balance. So any planning in between is positive. Yeah. And we went back to the very first part of it. The rules have all changed. Yeah, they have. So if the rules have all changed, you better take time to figure out what the new rules are. Yeah. And that's the key in that this isn't your grandparents' retirement anymore. That's right. So the Principles Retirement Planning course, the subtitle to that is Investing in the 21st Century. And uh, and so that's really what we tackle in that class is, is what has changed and what can we do as a result of it? What do we need to be aware of so that we can position ourselves to mitigate some of these risks and challenges that are facing us, but also really capitalize and so the puck is moving. Where you know Wayne Gretzky said, you know, good hockey players don't just get to the puck, but they know where it's going next. You know, that's a that's a difficult thing mm-hmm. to kind of understand where things are going. But um, but the point is, is that we can use math and science, and it can help us to to really understand how things have changed and make sure that we're dynamically staying up on it. So it's super important right now that that we understand before the next whatever shows up. And, and I think our purpose here today, just to reiterate. It's a teaser. There's a lot of information. There is. But if you're somebody that's looking at this video and you haven't taken the 101 class on Medicare, on Social Security, the principles of retirement, why wouldn't you? And why wouldn't you grab a friend and come in? And why wouldn't you make it an evening to go have some dinner and have some thought-provoking questions afterwards Mm. to talk about? Let this be the start of the dating and, and continue forward. And so... Those are those are all things that jump in my mind, and yeah. I th- I think we're 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 coming along towards the end here a little bit yeah. time wise, mm-hmm. but I think there's a couple things, you know, you and I talked about, and you asked me the question: What advice do you give people who are five to seven years out from retirement? What that should they be doing to properly plan? And I said, you know what, the number one thing when you plan a vacation, plan it as if you're test driving retirement. Hmm. So that's a great idea. We test drive cars before we buy them. Right. We go stay someplace for a couple weeks or, or months before we decide to move there or buy. Right. Um, we look at window shop. Mm-hmm. And so I think those are the keys that you and I agreed upon. Yeah. This is an opportunity to window shop retirement. And why wouldn't you? Right. And so that, that was kind of a point I wanted to make. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, it, I think it's just going to come down to, Overall, you get to to really say in this last question, what makes your firm different? Yeah. How do you stand out differently? Hmm. What point do you want to leave people with? When they walk in the door, they they know what they're getting. Yeah. I'd say that probably the biggest point of differentiation uh, in what we, we have as an organization is it's, it's what we've been alluding to here. It's, it's that if you can get the right education, it's going to empower you to make great decisions. And in our seven-step process, we believe that, that each one of those steps is its own conversation. Like none of this gets figured out in an hour. Like each conversation might be an hour to two hours and then planning on the back end to be able to present some ideas to see how everything collectively goes together. It's really uh, difficult uh, it takes a lot of expertise to understand how these things complement one another. I'd say another thing that makes us uh, a little bit different is that we embrace this idea that we're going to have to pay taxes. See, when we create income, I don't care whether it's from Social Security, I don't care whether it's from uh, dividends, whether it's from municipal bonds, whether it's from withdrawals from your 401k, pensions, whatever. We've got a few things that we need to be, really be paying attention to. And so one thing that we specifically do is in our distribution strategy. There's 101, by the way, different distribution strategies. Most people just say, hey, 4% rule is the answer. Well, not exactly. Uh, We have 101 unique withdrawal strategies that we run for every single family to make sure that we are evaluating this in a way that's gonna give us the best math and science. And so part of that is that we really have to look at the main four uh, tax lenses, uh, which helps us to determine how much we get to keep, how much we actually get to spend. Because again, you're a lifestyle that's spending a certain amount of money. Right. So the taxes are the the implication or the fruit or they're the byproduct of the income plan, the lifestyle that you're really looking to, to build. And so what we do is we take a look at ordinary income. 
Okay, that's withdrawals from our 401ks or our pensions or, or if we're working. We've got uh, capital gains, long and short term. Okay, there's there's certain uh, ways that we do this that are inefficient and certain ways that we can do this can be way more efficient and there can be some great brackets there. The third thing that we want to understand is uh, the provisional income equation that determines how Social Security is taxed, 0, 50 or 85 percent. By the way, uh, most people are not aware that we can actually get a lot of families that have real assets into a zero tax bracket in retirement, at least under today's code and what we feel like is, is, is reasonable and fair. And what if you can get into a zero tax bracket, but taxes go up by 50 percent? That's called a good idea. Uh, the fourth one is that Medicare uh, Part B and Part D have surcharges. Uh, based upon certain income provisions. And, and so we want to be intelligent about how we manage and navigate our, our expenses in this way. In fact, one thing that people don't know is that inside of Social Security, or, or sorry, inside of uh, retirement income planning, that there's a 49.95% tax bracket. 49.95% mm. tax bracket. Ouch. So the next dollars that you take are taxed at 50%. People have no idea that this happens to them. They just go along, they take their withdrawals and they just, oh, I hope it's working out. I think the tax guy is looking at this. But see, most CPAs, they're looking in the rear view mirror uh, at, at last year, right? They're getting our numbers in the box so we don't get in trouble. But what we're endeavoring to do with this tax advantage planning is we're looking forward. We're looking through the windshield of your life. We're showing you, hey, here's how we're looking to navigate things. Here's how we're, 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 we're strategically planning with our 101 unique ways of doing this. And so the education process of, of evaluating Medicare long-term care, evaluating Social Security and taxes, man, that's such a great class, evaluating the principles of retirement planning, investing in the 21st century, evaluating real estate, estate planning, how we're going to coordinate these things in, in a way that's going to be meaningful for us. We find that that's really where the rubber meets the road. And that's where we as a firm can add a tremendous amount of value. You know, if we're just trying to set up pie charts for everybody, that's that's part of the answer. But that's not going to get us really where we're trying to go. We're, we're, we're trying to figure out how do we look at the totality of an individual's life or family's life and how do we get those uh, get those goals met in the most efficient way? Perfect. Well, I think uh, I'm taking a peek here and, you know, we covered a lot of topics. Yes, we covered a lot of information and and back to people going into the class. Yeah. I, I always just go sometimes to different programs so that even if I know. Right. And I hear it again. Mm hmm. And I'm doing it. Yes, I know I'm I'm doing something right. Just confirm there's, it. There, yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So there's no downside to anybody attending any of the programs. Correct. Um, I hope this is something we can continue to do. Uh, I love the blend of the financial, the non-financial, mm -hmm. the family, um, all the things we talked about. Yeah. It, it's just there's too many parts of retirement. It's you and I talking about mm -hmm. it's a jigsaw puzzle yeah. and finances is one part. Yep. Uh, lifestyle is one. Um, the rules, the rules are gone. We're creating new rules yep. and we're finding answers to those, to those questions. Yeah. The last point I'll just note here is that if, if people are interested in joining us at an upcoming class or seeing what those schedules might look like uh, in their upcoming area, um, then go to ready to retire, R E T I R E dot com. And retire stands, that's that's actually our education program. Uh, retire stands for retirement education with a time tested, independent, rational evaluation. We're doing retirement education in here. We're doing, we're talking about time tested ideas. We're talk, not talking about theoretical. We're talking about independent advice that helps and empowers people to make rational evaluations. Uh, as it relates to the retirement planning. So readytoretire.com uh, has all the information in there. Sign up, et cetera, become our, be our guests, come get a workbook uh, and, uh, and gain some additional education that hopefully uh, can make a significant difference to you in your lifetime. Now, I promise wherever someone's at, you, you are going to hear new ideas yeah. uh, within these particular classes. So um, I appreciate it. Hey, thanks for your time today. Well, it was super mine, fun. Thank, Thank you. you.